Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews, the show where we bring you up close and personal with some of Canada's most exciting and vibrant communities. My name is Christopher Brown, and I will be your host for this exciting show. Over the course of this series, we will be sitting down with local elected leaders from across Canada to learn about who they are, what drives them, and how they are working to make their communities a better place for everyone who lives there. Now, we believe on this show, surprisingly, that the best way to understand a community is to actually talk to people who live and work there. That is why we are so honored to have our guest onto the show today. Please help me welcome Councillor Teresa Cunningham of the town of Penhold in the province of Alberta. Teresa, welcome to the show. Thank you, Chris. I, I appreciate the opportunity to come and chat with you. Thank you. So this is my first interview I've conducted uh, while being on this show where I have met the person prior to the oh. interviewing being conducted. While I've known people, I did not know you prior to us meeting. And this is, ha and when we, I went up and visited Penhold, I got a tour of Penhold. So when we talk about tourism, I'm going to know some of these locations. So this is a unique interview for myself, but I want to start with the question. I start with all my interviews and you're no exception. Teresa, where'd your sense of duty to serve come from? Um, Probably, I don't know, as far back as I can remember, I've always just been a helper. Um, so like uh, helping at the library after school, you know, voluntary time there. Um, just, uh, I don't know, just just always, always that way. Like uh, even, you know, grade six, I'd bike across town and go help my mom make beds at the inn she was working at and stuff. And um, so the like that, that part of it's always been there, the, the community part. Um, as far as the council part goes, um, I already was pretty involved in our community as regards to like volunteering, uh, through, um, my kids are in two different schools here. We have three schools in, in town. So my kids are already in two different schools there. I was on the museum board. Like I just, yeah, if there's something that needs done, but, um, I'm there to do it. So, yeah. Was politics discussed at the dinner table growing up? Was that something that was discussed? And more importantly, because it's a municipal show, we know that people mm -hmm. talk about federal politics and provincial politics. Was municipal politics discussed at the dinner table growing up? A uh, little bit, but uh, as far as the, like, yeah, it was definitely discussed at the dinner table. Um, <laughs> and watching the news and whatnot at that time, there wasn't a pause on the news. So you just had to like keep zipped quiet until after the news was done and then the deconstruction and conversation would begin. Um, you know, I want to say, you know, my dad pretty well kept a thumb on what was going on, um, you know, municipally, you know, provincially and federally that was, it, you know, he, he loved that stuff. So, um, you know, it was, it was discussed, uh, weren't really like super involved. It wasn't until I was actually on council and I also have a love of genealogy. I looked back and I found like my great, great grandfather was a council person, like 1916 in Churchbridge, Saskatchewan. And I hadn't, I had no idea prior to this, right? Like, and, and at the time they had, um, they had passed a bylaw about not having your horse. You couldn't have your horse tied up for over an hour on the main street. Otherwise it was stabled at your expense. So yeah, <laughs> neat things. I, it wasn't on my radar though. I'll tell you that. So yeah. I don't know what it is about Saskatchewan, <laughs> but it is one of these provinces that a lot of family members come from the municipal realm. I have spoken yeah. to many councillors and mayors and even myself. I have family members who were the former mayors of bigger Saskatchewan and you learn so much with genealogy. But I want yeah. to stick on you for a few seconds here, because I know in the last election in 2021, you decided to finally put your name forward. Prior to that election, had you considered even getting involved municipally? Because in our conversation when we were touring, I know that you had moved around a bit, but ultimately in 2021, you decided to put your name for it. Was that the first time that getting involved in elected politics was something that was even on your radar? Absolutely. Yeah. It, it wasn't, it wasn't for me, it wasn't until, uh, you know, you know, my husband, as well as I had another lady, uh, also, you know, a few people uh, come forward to me and talk to me and was like, you should really put your name in you. You'd be really good at that. You know, I was already uh, doing a lot of stuff like helped uh, found a citizens on patrol here in town and stuff. And so already had an idea as to how to chair meetings and stuff. So I thought, 
Oh, okay. Well, if these other people can see that potential in, in myself, you know what, like for, for all it's worth, uh, if I'm, you know, I, I might as well throw my hat in there and, and see, um, you know, if, so just, just to interrupt it, you here for it, a, you don't. just to interrupt there yeah. for a second, because I find that fascinating. Are you saying that it wasn't until people approached you that you decided you started to think the wheel started turning in your head and said, maybe I should run because yeah. I've spoken to you and I'm not trying to generalize here. And I hate doing this and I hate asking, I hate asking this question, but for women, it's harder for women to get involved in politics without being asked. And I, I say that because I've spoken to women in the past on the show who have mm -hmm. said it takes them about eight times for a woman to decide if they're going to get involved for you. Was it an, easy choice and had you even like prior to someone approaching you and saying hey did you want to run did you ever like consider it uh no i did not oh. consider it it was it was not even not even at all um i and then and then you know once it was you know people had come and ask then <laughs> I look, try to look at everything from every single possible angle um, before coming to a decision. And then once I've made my decision, that is it, I'm all in, right? So, um, you know, I, I weighed it, what's that going to, you know, because it's not just me that this affects, this affects my kids, you know, my husband, uh, you know, he, he works away a lot of the time. So this really is a juggling effect on, on my end. Um, so, um, you know, and, and like I say, with the kids, how am I still going to get them to and from, um, <laughs> their school, their events, their, their stuff. Right. So, uh, that, that obviously comes first. So, uh, all of those things were considered before, uh, putting my name in, but then once I decided to, I I'm so, so glad I did. So in 2021, you decide to put your name forward for municipal mm -hmm. elections, for someone like yourself, and I, I've gotten to know you a bit over the last few weeks of uh, doing this show and talking to you one-on-one -on -one in, in your truck, you seem to have a pulse on the community. You seem to know what the community may want or need with all your volunteerism work, with, all, with your citizens on patrol, with your time at the museum in Penhold. I want to know about that election period, though, because when you actually go door knocking and talking to your residents one on one, you're going to learn some interesting things from them because you're going to learn about the macro issues like the education, healthcare, infrastructure, potholes. But you're going to hear about some micro issues. Were you shocked about what you were hearing at the doors during that election in 2021? No, not not really. <laughs> Not really, because well, no, because I'm having all these conversations anyways, right? So yeah, uh, no, I can't really say I was shocked uh, with anything of it, and and quite honestly, going into uh, this election, um, it was unlike and uh, you know previous elections because so many things, uh, you know, um, were online. Like when I say things, so many so many different committees were on Zoom. So you could absolutely tune in to anything and and kind of and and understand what's going on, right? Um, without having to physically be there, I could tune in from my kitchen table and and understand what's going on. But like, I have a lot of those conversations with people around town, right? Like, um, you know, wanting more garbage cans placed strategically and stuff like that. So, you know, um, that it really didn't come as a shocker. Was there what was the issue that you wanted to advocate for, or was there multiple issues that you wanted to advocate for? Because you don't just get onto council just to be on council. You want to get onto council to help your community grow. You want to help your community prosper. For you, was there an issue that you saw that you wanted to address if you were so successful in your election run that you said, "I want to be able to uh, 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 help or my community grow in this way or address this issue in my community?" um well <laughs> with that i i'm one vote at the table so it's really it's really kind of weird to go along and say i'm gonna go ahead and do this because that's not the reality of it right uh what you, what are you, you talking about i sorry. did not know <laughs> speak speaking truth there no it's just uh you know that is that is the truth of it right like you you can say as much as you want but you know really when it comes down to it it's all about a strategic plan and following that and stuff and like and you know i uh, I wasn't naive to that. So uh, it wasn't that I was spearheading anything in particular uh, crime. Not that it was like super bad here, but, you know, I try to try to, to um, 
find ways of addressing things where it doesn't have to be through council either, right? Like Citizens on Patrol, that's nonprofit, that's volunteer run, and it's a wonderful way for community to come together. Whereas, you know, um, having a crime committee through council, I wasn't, you know, personally, because this is my personal opinion, this isn't a council opinion. Uh, I wasn't seeing it's like where that you, was you listened serving. to the show before. Uh, counselor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't seeing where that was really serving in a way that it could, whereas through a nonprofit, you know, uh, we were able to to help a lot more. I it, like I think so. Yeah. I want to turn to election night in 2021 because this is the fun election night because a, you get to go in and vote for yourself. If you did not vote for yourself in the advanced polls, but you get to go vote for yourself. Uh, hopefully you vote for yourself. If not, okay. Maybe there's less of an ego on some people than others, but for you going into that ballot box and seeing your name on that ballot, what was that experience like for yourself? Oh, well, as I'm sure many of your, your uh, people have said before, it's quite surreal. Um, I've worked with uh, Elections Alberta and Elections Canada before just because I like the process. Uh, I think it's really neat. Uh, also, um, you know, we try to teach our kids about that, you know, like the election process and all that stuff too. So it was a neat way to show them about that as well. But um, yeah, it's really weird to go in there and see your name. Like it's... Um, it's Did strange. it take a it's moment strange. to put the X beside the name? Because for me, the first time when I saw my name, I hovered over it about 12 times to make sure I was voting for myself and not somebody <laughs> else. Because I was like, make sure, okay, I'm five down, one over, put the <laughs> X there. Was it sur for being surreal? Did you take that moment in? Because you're oh, at that point did. putting your faith in the electorate that they're going to make the right decision, whether it be you, whether it be somebody else. But for you, that moment was uh, a, a big moment for a lot of people. How, what did you take out of that? Um, it was, it was, it was, uh, it was, like I say, it was very neat to be able to see this. Uh, as with my kids, I uh, really was able to to show them that, you know, if you put your mind to it and you want to do something and go out and try to achieve it, uh, it's a pretty big accomplishment. Even if, you know, even if you don't get it, your name's there. You, but you, you get the work. It. But you I, yeah, get but, it. Yeah, but but at the end of it all, like I felt it's a very weird process going door knocking and putting yourself out there uh like that, you know, selling selling you to people. Uh it's it's so strange. Um, but in that moment, you know, once you've cast your vote, that's it. You've you've done all you can do and it's not up to you anymore. And there is a calm that kind of comes over you. Um, kind of same thing when we got married. I was like, I've done all I can do to get ready for this. And, and the rest is just, it's out of my control. And then, and then it, it's, it's just, yeah, it, it's, so a, it's, it's out weird... of your control, but on election night polls close. And after the counting's done, the blue check mark goes beside your name and you are now the counselor elect for the town of Penhold. What is the exact, what is, what goes through your head when you find out that you're the next counselor? What, 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 what are you feeling at that moment? Do you remember? Uh, <laughs> relief, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, okay, whew, okay. And then, and then there's the anticipation for, okay, now what? Right. Um, uh, th that, you know, uh, and, and even at that, that, you know, the, you're, you're announced and, you know, um, I, I was, uh, I was the only new person on, on council. Uh, the rest, uh, had served already. Um, so, you know, that was different too. going into it, knowing that, yeah, I'm definitely the newbie in the, in the, in the seat. Um, but it, um, yeah, it, it's, that's one moment in itself, but then the next day comes, the next week comes, and then there's a lot of learning to do to understand what it is that, you know, your role is. You bring up a good point. And I, I've asked this question numerous times, but I want to pose it to you as well. There's a weight that people put on themselves when they go walk into that council chambers and particularly for someone who is the new kid on the block because you are elected the only newly elected councillor on your council in 2021. How much weight and responsibility did you put on yourself to make sure that you were 
performing at the same level as those reelected counselors, but also understanding that if you ask questions, it's okay if you ask questions, because there's a lot of new counselors out there who might be afraid to ask questions or might be afraid to put up their hand and say, I just don't know. And I need more information for you. What was that balancing act like to make sure you got things right, but make sure you were doing it correctly as someone who was new to the process of governance? Um, well, very fortunate. Okay. So there's a tremendous amount of pressure. Um, and I think a lot of that is just, you know, obviously I do that to myself. Um, <laughs> go figure. Uh, but no, I mean, you know, I, I, I signed up for it. So if anything, if there's anything that I do, I'm going to see it through to the end. Um, so, so there's a, there is a tremendous amount of pressure with that, but I'm very grateful that our, our CAO that we have, He's been with our municipality for like 20 years. He's an absolute wealth of knowledge. Uh, our mayor, the the you know the other fellow council members, they've been very fantastic about asking you know if I have any questions uh, or how do I go about this. And then you know they kind of laughed at me. At, you know one one thing I put a motion down and then I had to kind of strike my own motion. And it's like well we've all done that you know because <laughs> what was the you know, biggest learning mean, then you. What was the biggest learning experience for you? Because there's a lot of counselors in BC, Ontario, Manitoba, <laughs> PEI, who just got elected in their first term. Now you're two years into your first mandate. What, what was the biggest learning curve for you? And what advice would you give these new counselors who are just got, got elected and they're in their first 200 days of office? Uh Advice I would say is just, you know, try to take in as much as you can prior to, so you're, you're not going in, uh, uninformed, um, biggest learning curve, I would just say is uh, just the balance, right? Like I want to, I want to do all things. I want to, you know, be at all, all the council meetings, all the committee meetings. I want to do all the, the stuff in the community, but finding that balance is pretty, pretty tough sometimes. Um, Have you found as well it? as <laughs> I'm still learning that one. <laughs> But because <laughs> it's pretty busy outside of council as well. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> so I want to know from that experience then, because you're right. You, you seem like you're very engaged in the community. You seem to want the best for your community, but there's days that you want to just be Teresa. I'm assuming there's days that mm -hmm. you just want, you want to be mom. You want to be wife. You want to just relax at home with the kids, but <laughs> There are days that you have to be counselor. If you go out to the grocery store, you might get stopped at the grocery store and get asked some questions about things that are going on or have people approach you at events and say, I want to talk about this, my issue. How do you balance that? And do you find it tricky being a local counselor because you are in your community so much, not in Edmonton or Ottawa doing your job, you're in your community? I don't mind if I'm at the post office and somebody chat stops and wants to chat. My kids mind because they're like, come on, mom. Right. <laughs> like, if we stop at the kids library. Kids don't go like, with mom to the post office because uh, it takes them two hours to go. To the post <laughs> exactly. If we stop it at the multiplex, you know, and chat with the ladies at the library or, you know, um, just that, that part is, yeah, the kids kind of have an issue with that. I was, I was actually going to say too, with your last question, a big thing that for myself, I've set aside because I am involved in other community stuff with citizens on patrol, as well as like, a, as well as a regional director for Alberta citizens on patrol, um, that part, um, I've really tried to do any communication. I always do it through that email. Uh, so wearing multiple hats, cause I, you know, I have my one that I communicate with the school as through my personal one and then citizens on patrol president and then counselors. So that part's been a little uh, interesting to try to juggle too. So, but yeah, I, I don't have a problem having conversations with people if they're or out, out and about in town. So yeah, kids That's have an issue with it. <laughs> I want to turn to my second segment of the show. And this is the, this is the big segment. This is the, about the town of Penhold as a whole. And I want to preface this by saying, this is a conversation between myself and the counselor. This is not a motion of counsel. This is not a direction of counsel. This is not a policy of counsel. This is her opinion. So 
The million dollar question in segment two is, in your opinion, Councillor Cunningham, what is the biggest issue facing the town of Penhold today? Well, uh, we have like even or just issues, <laughs> issues. OK, well, uh, like last night, we had an issue with, uh, you know, drainage. We're in the spring melt. Right. So, uh, you know, how to how to deal with that and and um, identify those problem areas so that it's not an issue for next year or it's less of an issue. Um, you know, uh, there's truck parking and there's, um, uh, right now, one of, one of the things that actually like our last council, um, identified, um, was they did a questionnaire, things that were identified were, that were important to the people of the town were trails. Uh, second on there was dog park. So we've, we've done a lot of work with the trails, being able to have our community hub area. Uh, we recently got the Alberta transportation funding grant. So which all just works into our strategic plan there, but now dog parks number, it's a big one. It's a big hot topic. So, and we're trying to do work to identify that. Uh, we set aside, when we had an open house with Alberta transportation, we also had a map set up with different areas identified for a dog park cost, what that might look like and stuff. And just try to, you know, get a conversation going with people like, okay, if we do a dog park, there is a cost to it. Where would you like it? And, and you know, that sort of stuff. So. Yeah. Community engagement is a good thing. I think there's a lot of people out there who would say that people need to get being more engaged get with their municipalities. Engaged. I'm one of those people. You talk about the dog park and I want to stick on that, just that issue, but not just the dog park, but in general dog park. Yeah. And that made no sense to me. So hopefully it made sense to you. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to know, you can go and engage with your citizens a hundred percent of the time you can go engage with every single member of your community. They will all give you different opinions though. They will all give you different issues or they will give you different uh, reasons why they believe a dog park should be in certain areas of the town. You as counselor have to make the final decision though. How do you do that? How do you do that with so many diff differing opinions and differing voices in your community you have to make the best decision for your community and you have to make the best decision that you believe is in the right for your community. How do you see yourself in the role of counselor addressing the needs and wants of your community, like a dog park, but knowing that you're not going to please a hundred percent of the people in your community. If you put the dog park in the community hub area, the Southwest, Southeast, Northeast, how do you do that? Yeah. Um, well, first thing is uh gather as much information as we can because you don't want to be making any decision on the fly you want to have an informed decision ha and getting the feedback from the people in town because then that way we can say no we we've, we've engaged you know we've talked uh you know there's been ample opportunity to to voice your opinion on this and then when it comes down to it is you know what serves everybody best right uh and even as, as I'm sure you know, sometimes too, we don't always vote together, but once the decision's made, that is the decision and that's the direction we go because that's, uh, yeah, that's just, <laughs> that'd be the best way to, to approach it. Well, how does respect come into play then? Because I can imagine while not every decision at council is going to be 100% unanimous, you have to respect the other side if you vote for or against an issue that they believe their side is the right side. But at the end of the day, like you said, you all agree that if a, mo if a motion passes or a policy passes, it's policy or uh, the motion. How much yeah. respect do you bring into that table to ensure that while you may have dissenting voices against what you believe is right, you respect the other person enough to say, okay, I believe you have the right to talk and I believe you have the right to voice your opinion, but at the end of the day, may the best person, best side win, not best person. <laughs> um, well, it's just, you know, that's what that, that, that room, our council chambers, that's what it's there for is to make decisions. It would be very dysfunctional if, uh, you know, I don't agree with somebody, it, you know, it's like a marriage. I'm not always going to agree with everybody at that table on a on hundred percent of the things, but our end goal is the same. And I think if you stay true to that and you say, you know, we're all here to serve our community and, you know, it'd be very dysfunctional to keep bringing things back because you don't have the vote you want. That is, that's, you know, that's the direction of council. And that's the way we proceed. And, uh, yeah, that's the, you know, right off the get go that, uh, 
that's the way I've approached it. So respect also comes into play when you're talking about residents as well, because you have to give the residents, the people who have voted for you, the people who have put you in this position, but also the people who didn't put you in your position, yeah. because I'm assuming you did not get a hundred percent of the vote. I'm just <laughs> randomly assuming that I know you should never assume, but no one in this province has never gotten a hundred percent of the vote. I don't care who you are. Um, I want to know, though, how much respect do you put into listening to all sides of an issue when it comes to uh, certain projects or certain funding uh, projects that need to go on in your community? Because everyone has the right to be heard, and you as counselor have to be respectful in listening to every side of the issue. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think I think. A lot of times, it's not that you have to go, you're not convincing people by any means, but I think if you kind of explain as to how you got to the decision, you know, or how council got to the decision that they did, I think a lot of people understand that. You're like, oh, okay, I didn't see it from that way either, right? I think people are really open to engagement and, and uh, you know, and hearing that, right? Because it's not that we just okay, that's just the way we're going to go. That, that That's not it at all. There's a lot of work that goes into it behind the scenes with the administration when things are brought forward to us. So um, yeah, I, I think I think if you're just engaging with people that way and, and explaining uh, the why behind things, I mean, we do that with our kids. I won't just say no. I say no and I explain why, right? And then all of a sudden there's a, there's a better understanding that comes from that. There's, so- I, I've asked this question a little bit beforehand, but I'm going to reword it a little bit because I want to get into the crux of this segment. If I go talk to a hundred people in your community, which after you dropped me off at the bakery on a Sunday, I went and I went and chatted at a few with a few people at a local coffee shop. And I asked them, what are the hundred, what are the most pressing issues in your community? Now there was a range of issues that they talked about. They talked about healthcare. They talked about uh, education. They talked about infrastructure upgrades. They talked about potholes as well. And as you can imagine, potholes is one of these things that always will be there. No matter what happens, potholes will always be around. You as counselor have to look at all the issues that people bring to you. And when it comes to budget, when it comes to strategic priorities, you have to navigate a system where you have X amount of funding for projects yeah. and X amount of funding for potholes, X amount of funding for this, that, and the other. And you have to look at people and say, I would love to help you with this upgrade to this uh, road, but right now there are worse roads off in this community that needs upgrades more than yours. How do you see yourself in the role of counselor of addressing the needs and wants of the individual citizen, because you're there to represent the town, but you also have to represent the citizens as well. So how do you balance that? Well, potholes, I will say, Public Works actually <laughs> filled that. And they're awesome. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, that that's a weather issue, right? Weather, and when I say weather, I mean, goodness, <coughs> yesterday we just had snow. So for a little bit there, so uh, fantastic. They were able to fix that. But, um, you know, the balancing, a lot of it comes into, whereas are we able to fit that into our strategic plan? How does that work? Um, there is, there is some things that, yeah, we might not get to it this year, but, you know, we do have that on next year's list. Right. Um, so, so that's one thing. And, and of course, everybody's issue is very important to them of, and, and not, not saying that it's, it's not right. Uh, but, but, uh, yeah, there does come a bit of a balancing as to, you know, how, how, how important is that? truly and how many people is it affecting right if it's affecting a larger group of people obviously you're going to approach it differently too right you, so. you talked about communications in the last part of this uh this part, uh, segment and i want to yeah. know how important is it for you as counselor to communicate with residents that sometimes what your issue is cannot be a priority for us because there's no money and unless you want 20 percent increase in taxes yeah. which no one ever does um, you're not going to get it fixed right now, but if you look and if you plan, and if you check the websites of Penhold, you will see that there are steps in place that yours will be addressed. Just not right now. How big is communication for you? Uh, we, we try, uh, to, to communicate 
a lot to people what's going on in town. Uh, you guys do we, actually. You guys are like one of the best towns that actually does communicate with the residents. And I and I jokingly and I'm for those who are listening to this, you're not oh. going to see this, but I listened. I read this the reporter uh, after I got a copy of it, and I can tell you, more communities should take a page out of what you're doing. Oh, thank you. I I will absolutely pass that on to our administration because. They work hard. Uh, no, it's, you know, it's not just that, but I mean, I think that's a huge part of building community is having, we do try to do a lot of events. Uh, we do have a welcome to Penhold night coming on uh, April 26th. We've got our business appreciation. We've got a volunteer thing, uh, volunteer night, recognizing all the volunteers in town, because, uh, you know, that's a huge part of what makes uh, our, our town tick. Uh, and, Actually, Chris, you're going to love this, but when I went down to go pick up my pin, uh, I was, uh, I had mentioned at our, our council meeting about wanting to archive stuff, and I was given a album from the 1980s in there, and they even, like, past councils, all this wonderful stuff for our museum, but they even have, like, a 1988 volunteer night pictures of people receiving their little plaque for all their volunteer work. So, I mean, this isn't new to Penhold, recognizing that and trying to engage with people. So, um, yeah, I I mean, we're pretty active throughout all of our council pages, like not just the town of Penhold, but like our mayor, uh, other council members, we all have our own council pages that we try to share information on um, and just try to get as many, uh, you know, people involved in town as we can. On the flip side, though, because you can communicate to the you're blue in the face, but communication can go only as far as the voter or resident wants it to go. Apathy comes into play when it comes to municipal politics. And I say this a lot, and this is a new question that I've been posing to counselors. For you, how is the town of Penhold uh, engaged with its residents and are residents engaged with the town? When you put out a questionnaire or a survey, is there a high turnover where people actually will give their opinion or feedback on issues that the town of Penhold's looking for? Because we talk about apathy a lot in this show, and I want to get to the crux of are people engaged or are towns not engaging correctly? So for you, are the people of Penhold engaged enough that you feel like you're getting a good sample of what the people of Penhold want? Yeah, I would I would say yes. We we just had a open house uh for me when well not that long ago with our uh transportation minister. We were gonna we were going to have a uh traffic circle. They've now since taken that back to the drawing board, they're gonna reconfigure it, make it a bit bigger, which you know make makes sense to uh if you're gonna go ahead and do it, do it for looking for down the road, right? Um, but we had a really good turnout, you know, for our community. I thought it was a really good turnout. We had questionnaires. Uh, it was a nice chance to talk with us, talk with the minister, talk with the gentleman that actually the engineer had done up the drawing and stuff too. So um, <laughs> we do a lot of stuff through, pardon me, too, through, um, through our library. There's a lot of engagements and different things that we try to do down, you know, downstairs through there, uh, our uh, appreciation night or what well, no, no sorry not appreciation night it's our discovery night we did like a barbecue we had a questionnaire set up then you know uh and you know any opportunity that we have to kind of take a the pulse of the town so to speak uh, we try to do that and they're not and residents aren't afraid to give their opinions no no i i haven't run into it yet right i haven't run That's into awesome. it uh yeah <laughs> so i want to end this segment on this question since my last conversation with a, uh, a elected official from Penhold, the mayor, um, there's been a lot of changes that have happened in Penhold. Um, what's the big one that you would want my listeners and viewers to know about that you'd say, you know what, Chris, this has been a big success in the town of Penhold because over the last few months, since October, that's right, only in October when we last <laughs> when we talked to Mayor Mike, uh, has oh. things changed. What would that What would that X be for you about what has changed, and what would you want people to know about? Okay, I've got three X's. Sorry, let's do it. Let's it. do all three. Okay. <laughs> okay, we have our community hub area, which is wrapping up, uh, and that is a project. It was a one point five million dollar project that went in. Uh, that is. Uh, our 
it's just south of our multiplex. Uh, so that gives us a gazebo. There's bathrooms. There's an area for people to come and do uh, barbecues. We're, we've got our benches purchased and garbage cans and pathways. And it's just a wonderful gathering space, uh, you know, in our great big field that we have south of the multiplex near to our skate park and our uh, soccer fields. Uh, so that that's a wonderful addition to the town. I can see lots of town events happening there. I can't wait for the first wedding to happen in that gazebo because I know it's going to happen. It's a um, beautiful gazebo. <laughs> It is. It's almost wrapped up. But and then we also uh, we were confirmed to have the Alberta Transportation Funding Grant come through. So that's more connectivity in our town, more trails. We often hear from people uh, also coming in from outside of town, how much they love that we have our trails, but how much they love that we have lit trails. As you saw, too, even just in our drive, how many people are out walking and how many people are walking with their dogs and stuff like you just happen to come on a, on a nice day right so, but there's a lot of people out walking like and I think you know a lot of people are they, they they enjoy that the the being outside part you know um waving hi to your neighbor as you're cruising by um, you know that, a lot of people another... too because a lot of people were waving at you I'm just putting that out there right now Teresa <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh you know that that's a that part was part of our strategic plan. It's just it was, everything just kind of fell into place here with that, but it really enhances that area around our multiplex. It's just such a lovely compliment to have that Alberta Transportation Fund come in. And then also, we also got the approval for a new middle school. So that new school will be near to the multiplex as well, uh, sharing the bus loop with our existing high school. Um, that's uh, grades four to eight. So we do have K through 12 here in town, which I know you were quite surprised. Like, oh, wow. And, you know, it, it's, it's pretty fantastic to be able to have our kids here. You know, it's, I, like I say, I had to run down, to, you know, run up to the office and go get a pin. I was back home in like five minutes, right? Like it doesn't take that like zip zap and you're done, but you're back home. And it's wonderful that like the kids have a ch chance to bike to school from wherever in the world they are in town. So those so are those are that, three great big things. They they are. And when I was giving getting the tour uh, from Councillor Cunningham, and I can tell you, and this I'm not sure if it was just because she was all excited that I was coming and she really wanted to show off, but. There's when you spoke about your community, there was a passion in your voice that I rarely see with some elected officials. I'm not saying all, I'm not painting a broad stroke, but you're doing it for the right reasons. And I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to do this interview. But I want to turn to my last segment. And this is my fun segment because A, I got to know what you're about to talk about before you even talk about it. So, Counselor, I can't say I'm going to come spend my economic dollars in your community because I've already done that. I've already been to your community and I spent <laughs> money, but I will be back because I want a tour, a true tour of the multi uh, rec center, uh, yeah. multi use facility center, or however you want to call it. Sorry. So, <laughs> Counselor, in your opinion, for my listeners who are across Canada and around the world, if they come to Alberta, they need to stop in Penhold. What are some of the hidden gems that they need to do if they're there? Okay, well, uh, thank you. Yeah, I <laughs> I just, I feel so awful that you weren't, like, you, when you had come through, we, it was holiday, Easter holidays, so uh, our multiplex was closed, but our multiplex is absolutely something to stop in and check out. Uh, it's It was built 2010. But it, it's it's a pretty impressive building. There's a, a, like 100,000 square feet in that building. So uh, in there on the weekends, there's, you know, Penhold Seasonal Market, which is there. Uh, we have uh, Arena. We've had the Halinka Cup there twice now we've hosted, which is pretty big deal for our town. Um, we've got walking track. There's uh, our exercise area. There's uh, our... Our, we've got meeting rooms there, our libraries there, municipal offices upstairs, uh, gymnasium, like when we have our big uh, Remembrance Day ceremony, because it's a multi-use, it was built with a multi-use purpose in mind so that we do share some areas with the high school. So there's a great big partition that will open up and then we can have our entire town come together 
for Remembrance Day, that sort of kind of stuff. Uh, one moment. I'm so sorry, Julie, not right now, please, sweetie. Thank you. <laughs> Cutting this That's out. Right. Tourism. <laughs> but uh no like that that would be that's one that that's one of the the places to check out uh and I, like when you come through again I really hope you do we've got a lot of uh neat penhold history up on the walls as well um like I say you, you'd love that uh <laughs> and then as well as like our our museum we've got uh that's a that's a really fun point where we are we've got a old caboose there so uh in June, July, and August, our museum, we try to have that open from six till eight. And during that time, we have the museum open, we have the caboose open, as well as we have uh, our little ice cream shack, which is our little hidden gem. Um, when we serve, we scoop ice cream out of there. It's all, it all goes back to the, uh, our Penhold uh, and district uh, or museum society, right? Oh, so wow. um, yeah. And, it's just it's uh, a very neat way to engage with people uh and like i we, we had to do a renovation and um it was a pretty pretty significant renovation for that little shack and i had every day that i was there like like blood sweat and slivers went into that building to get it back up and going but every day i was there i I would have people pull in to that pull out and ask when is when is the ice cream shop opening up again when is it opening and um I I knew it was missed by the community but I really didn't I didn't have I didn't understand how much like people will bike down there with their kids in the evening and uh sit and have an ice cream and it's just it's the most wholesome thing that you will ever see I just I I love that um those would be oh and then there's the Fairland School which uh, was a schoolhouse that is, was moved onto that site. I, even this summer, I had a gentleman come and tell me that he actually, he came with his mother, his elderly mother, and he's like, I did grade one. This was my school in grade one. So that was really neat too. Yeah. I got a private tour. I know I'm going to brag here for a little <laughs> bit, but I got a private tour of the museum. And I can tell you right now, if you like museums as much as I do, you need to get to Penhold to visit this museum because you walk in and there's so much info. Like I barely scratched the surface on what was on the walls, but you you have a, a very unique museum and I recommend it to anyone who's passing through or even get off the beaten track of Highway 2 and go visit this museum because you will not be sorry you did. There's my, there's my yeah. there's my shameless plug for you, there, Teresa. Well, and even those train enthusiasts, the chance to like be in be, be in a caboose, right? And <laughs> sitting up with a couple is kind of cool. So, yeah. <laughs> so I want to turn to the second last question, and the second last question is: Where do you go? Where do you go after a hard day of work? After a hard day of council? Where do you go to decompress in the community? Is there a park? Is there a park? Is there a local watering hole? Is there a museum that you just go and just decompress and just let all the worries of the day wash away and just get back to your center? Um. Okay. I know I'm not allowed to say, but like, I I enjoy just sitting sit down. I wasn't in the evening gonna after. say it. I was not gonna. I like say to sit can't. down in the evening after and just like <sighs> and. Um, have a nice cup of tea. It's for myself. I am. I I love this. I I really am enjoying this role. So, um, <laughs> pardon me. I kind of go into the um, council with. I'm all ramped up. I'm excited to give my report. So it's a lot of energy. The you know emotionally, you're up here. You're down here. It's <laughs> so uh, in the evening, having that nice cup of tea helps. But I've been lately trying to um, <laughs> join Zumba class because it's something completely outside of this. I don't have a chance to think about council. I don't have a chance to think about any of the other committee stuff, work, emails, blah, blah, blah. All of that is just something that serves me. And uh, I I kind of enjoy that, actually. I have no coordination whatsoever. Like, I, I'm... <laughs> I'm not That's leading that class by any means, but yeah, next I time I'm in Penhold, you and I are going to Zumba class. I don't care where we're doing, but we're going to Zumba class <laughs> and we'll be the two uncoordinated people in the back, just making complete <laughs> fools of themselves. Anyway. Yeah. It's it's um, a workout on the abs. Cause you're laughing so darn hard. So. <laughs> 
I want to turn to my last question, and this is the truly the million dollar question. I know I've said that twice already, but this is the one that's the most important. And this one, you can take as long as you want to answer this question or as short as time as you want to answer this question. But counselor, in your opinion, what makes the town of Penhold such a unique place to live, to work and to raise a family? Straight up, I don't need to take a, I don't need any time for that one. It's the community, it's the people here. Uh, anybody will tell you, um, it, you know, it's so inviting. Everybody here is so friendly that you walk in, like you walk into the coffee shop and it's, you know, you're, you're welcome to the open arms. Um, it's when you, when you're, when you're walking at nighttime and you go down some of these closes, everybody's sitting on their porch and they're watching their kids on their bikes and stuff. I mean, it's that kind of, it's that kind of stuff, you know, you know where the kids are because the pile of bikes is on somebody's front lawn, right? It's, it's that, it's those little things that make pen hold what it is. Um, you know, we're, we're pretty established now. I think Mayor Mike touched on this when he had his interview with you with, uh, our, our demographic where it was like, you know, uh, at that time, I think when he first took office, it was like 90, 95% of it was commercial and, and 90 was residential and stuff. And, and now we've had that, that shift. Um, but I'm not sure where I was going with that. <laughs> Maybe that's the part. Let's try this again. Yes, let's try that again. So I'm going to ask the million dollar question here, counsel. <laughs> um, and this is the most important one. Take as long as you want or as short as you want to answer this question. In your opinion, what makes the town of Penhold such a unique place to live, to work, and to raise a family? Okay, so so that that answer would be the people in it, the community. Uh, it it's uh, when it's it's very inviting uh, when you're out and about and you're walking and uh, you look down any one of the closes, you can see the pile of bikes on somebody's lawn. You know where the kids are. Uh, it's when you're you know everybody's out walking. They're walking their dog. Um, you know, whether they're, you know, from here as a long-term resident or moved here, everybody is so inviting. Uh, when you go into your grocery store, hi, when you go into the post office, hello, uh, the coffee shop, it's, it's the people here that make Penhold what it is. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's the, that's the truly different part about, about Penhold. We looked at, even when we decided to move here, uh, obviously, I was I was born in Red Deer, so I obviously knew about Penhold and stuff. But I I had no idea until actually living here what a gem it is. So, yeah. <laughs> Counselor, I want to take a moment and say thank you. Thank you for your, A, giving me a tour of your community, but B, taking time out of your busy schedule and doing this, sitting down and driving me around Penhold was one, one thing that a lot of people don't do, but, and then coming on and talking about yourself um, and taking time out of your busy schedule, because I know you are a busy person. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for doing uh, your job. Uh, an advocate for your community and being such a great person to sit down and chat with because it does not feel like 45 minutes have passed, but here we are almost 50 minutes. And I can tell that you are in it for the right reason. And we need more people at the council tables like you. So thank you so much. Well, thank you. Thanks for Chris. You know, I appreciate you reaching out and giving us the opportunity to, to tell people about our town. Uh, and and I, I like that you're doing what you're doing and getting people involved in municipal politics and, you know, having people maybe disengage for a little bit and, and look a little closer to home uh, as to what's going on in their community. So thank you. With that, I want to remind everyone, put down social media for at least 10 minutes a day, as the counselor just alluded to. Go have a conversation with somebody. It helps our society, helps our democracy, and helps us be better people. So with that, this has been the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brand. Have yourself an excellent day. And remember, everyone, just keep talking. <laughs>